Hello, my name is Caroline Rhodes and I'm a physiotherapist with a practice in Hong Kong called The Body Group. I have over 20 years experience in working with newborn babies and one of the things that I do with these babies is I help them with what's called flathead syndrome. The other name for it is called brachycephaly or plagiocephaly. And I'm just going to show you a little demo on a skull, a baby skull. So the front and the back. When we look at the back, sometimes it can be flat on one side. And what that's called is plagiocephaly or plagiocephaly. If it's straight down the back, it's called brachycephaly or brachycephaly. And what I, um, a question that I often get asked is, well, how is this different from a helmet? So I want to address in this little video clip why uh, head shaping manually is different from a helmet. Now, one of the things that I do when I look at a baby is I actually look at the whole baby. And I'm going to just show you on this little demo baby. A lot of the times a baby, it could, uh, its head might be only tilted to one side or it might be only looking to one side. And no matter what you do, you just can't get the baby to look the other way. Um, an old way of treating something like this would be to stretch it. Now, I personally think that that is not the best approach. I think it would be incredibly painful if somebody stretched my neck and I couldn't get it to go in the direction I wanted to go into. Um, and I would not do that to a baby. And they often cry and scream. And I think it probably is quite painful because a lot of the muscles are really stiff. And by stretching it, you're really not getting to the root of the problem. Now, often what I find with uh, these babies, if it's really persistent, the other things that I do is I actually look at the whole spine of the baby, okay? And often the pelvis is twisted, and you can tell because when you look at their bum cheeks on a baby, the creases on the bottom should be level, okay? So when I see a baby, those are some of the landmarks I'm looking at. If one bum cheek is higher than the other, then I know that there's a rotation usually on the lower side that's causing this imbalance and what that does is it can cause some other restrictions and it can also restrict their neck and so with a baby that comes to me with a, a flat head I always check to make sure that the pelvis or the bum creases and the crease down the middle are symmetrical. The other thing I do is I check to make sure that the upper back is moving properly. A baby should easily be able to go into extension when a baby can't go into extension, you usually know this because when they have to do tummy time, which I think is very important, either to prevent and help to correct a flat head, they cry, they cry, they cry, they can't stand it, they can't even lift their head up. This baby often will have a restricted thoracic spine or upper back. That's another area that I will also address and look at. I also check range of motion throughout the whole spine. They should be able to side bend. They should be able to rotate easily. All these things need to be assessed before I even begin to look at the neck and head. So the thing with um, a helmet is that it's not a holistic approach. Now I've definitely referred some babies to get a helmet. These are babies that are often six, seven, eight, nine months older. They're at the age where I actually can't work with them very well. And the main reason is because they're so active they can't hold still. So it's impossible for me to actually do all the mobilizations I need to do on their spine and then to begin doing the head shaping. Um, so sometimes I will definitely refer a baby for this sort of thing, but I feel good in that at least I've done what I could. I've checked out the spine, I feel like the spine is in very good alignment, and therefore um, with the head molding helmet, the baby doesn't have to hold still. They just wear the helmet 23 hours a day and it will gently shape it. And I think they probably will get faster results if the rest of the body has been corrected. Now, if I'm seeing a baby, the sooner they come in, the better. Um, the reason for that is some of the bones will start to close. The first one is in the forehead. So if we look at the skull on a baby, the forehead's in two pieces, okay? That's because these four bones have to actually overlap, it looks like a cone, and then the baby's head can get through the birth canal. Then it will start to settle. And it takes about 72 hours for this to calm down. Sometimes when there's been a vacuum extraction, also called a bontus, or forceps, now that can also affect the baby's head. 
Other factors could be the shape of the um, mother's pelvis, um, if there's been any complications in the bed, baby's head getting through the pelvis. Um, these can also affect the head shape. Um, it can also be positioned in utero even before the birth. So if they go through the birth canal, um, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be a vaginal birth because that actually helps to shape and mold and it's kind of the first adjustment the baby gets. Um, and if it hasn't settled and then you notice that they're either only laying on one side, their spine is twisted, they only look on one side, um, then it might be something to definitely consider getting a checkup on. If you start to see that the head shape is definitely starting to get a little flat on one side, for sure, try to get treatment as soon as possible because it's so much easier. Like I said, some of these bones close and the first one is the forehead and that starts closing around the second month. And the reason I want this forehead to be able to be corrected is, you can't, I'm going to show you on another skull. So if you look at the eyes, this is color coded, so all the different bones have a different color. When you look at the eyes, see all the different colors of bones here? You have seven bones that make up the eye socket. And so depending on the delivery, the baby can have asymmetrical eyes. And I really want to shape those eyes gently, moving the bones gently, using the crayon.